Indeed, a very wide spectrum of gynecological conditions causes people to be candidates for in vitro fertilization. Among those conditions, the most common ones are polykystic ovaries, endometriosis and pelvic infections. Also, some kind of rare congenital anomalies like congenital absence of fallopian tubes, structural anomalies of womb are indications for IVF treatment. As I said, among them, the most common one is polykystic ovaries and endometriosis. As is known, polykystic ovaries is a condition in which ovulation is very few and with long durations. Indeed, it is not appropriate to call it a disease, better a syndrome. In that case, if a normal pregnancy is not possible, IVF can be considered as a method. Again, endometriosis, especially nowadays due to the increase of environmental toxins, raises up as a reason for many patients to prefer IVF treatment as an option. Indeed, there are two widely accepted types of IVF. One of them is microinjection of intrachytoplasmic sperm injections. The second is a microinjection method called insemination, in which very powerful microscopes are being used. In this fertility center, we use this second method of insemination. In conventional microinjection, a microscope that can enlarge 400 times is being used. In insemination method, we use one that can magnify 8 to 12,000 times. Certainly, men should be examined by urologists and women by gynaecology doctors who are specialized in this area. A spermiogram from a very specialized expert is necessary for men. For women, some kind of hormones that are given at the third day of menstruation, tests regarding thyroid functions and infection parameters which may be the cause of a possible miscarriage on an early stage and hysterosalpingogram are absolutely necessary. Some bleeding may occur during aspiration of the eggs. Injuries on intestines may come up. Some complications due to anesthesia may happen and allergic reaction may develop due to the medications used during the process. Nevertheless, in safe hands, these complications are so rare, if any. Yes, for that reason, the number of embryos are limited. We do not transfer more than two, because it is something that we are most scared of to have a multiple pregnancy. We do not wish such a situation. Multiple pregnancy means high risk. We do one embryo transfer if the eggs collected are mature enough with high quality under the age of 35 and two embryos for above 35-year-old women. We never do three embryo transfer. Although there is no age limitation, the pregnancy chances are very low after the age of 44. This should be explained to the patient very sincerely. Of course, it is not possible to apply this procedure to patients with no sperma. Again, during early stages, the patients with very low ovulation and patients with no uterus cannot go through this procedure. If the eggs are not retrieved, it can be done after one month. But if egg aspiration is done three times a year for patients under the age of 35 and four times above 35. The treatment starts at the second day of menstruation. If there is no kist, etc. existing in the ovaries and the hormonal levels are appropriate, we directly start hormone injections and medication. Within eight to ten days on medicine and with ultrasound checks, the egg reaches to a certain size. When we are convinced that they are mature enough, we collect them through vaginal way under mild anesthesia. The same day with INS method, we fertilize them with the partner's sperms. And after three to five days following the fertilization with insemination, we again transfer them into the uterus of the mother. 
We observe if the pregnancy is successful by looking at HCG in blood at the 12th day following the procedure.